five. PFL signed a multi-year extension in November of 2023. Dana White said in January, TKO expects to begin talks with ESPN in the next three or four months. How it plays into ESPN's domestic pay-per-view rights distribution with UFC remains to be seen. Currently, one must subscribe to ESPN Plus in order to be able to order UFC pay-per-views. WWE has a deal with AEW. Expires at the end of 2024. While their exclusive negotiating window is not public knowledge, WBD considered the front runner, giving Tony Khan's publicly stated desire to remain loyal. They have yet to become part of WBD's BR Sports tier on the Max streaming service, despite being listed within TNT Sports. However, Dynamite Collision Rampage would be available via this new skinny bundle if they remain on the WBD networks. So, you know, there were a few, there was a point where, uh, you know, people were like, ah, you know, nobody watches TV. There's, it's just it's all streaming. And, you know, they jumped the gun by a lot. And there are still a lot of people watching television. As we will find out this Sunday for the Super Bowl. But the fact of the matter is, we're moving towards streaming very, very rapidly. And uh, it'll be very interesting to see how everybody benefits and does not benefit from this. I would not be the least bit surprised if... I shouldn't say sooner rather than later. Whenever this Peacock deal comes up, I would not be the least bit surprised if you had to buy ESPN Plus and we started to have to buy the major WWE pay-per-views at uh, $49.95 again. I think that, uh, I don't know, the days of uh, $4.99 Peacock, not sure how long those are going to last now that we've had this merger, but we shall see. Is the UFC... Is one of the options to cut a deal with this new conglomerate? Can this group have their own television deals or streaming deals with companies? You know what I mean? If they're going to have their own their own leadership, could they sign an exclusive deal with the UFC? I don't know. I have no idea what any of this means, except it's all changing very, very rapidly. And it is interesting because WWE, that new deal that they signed, their new uh, television deal for Raw on uh, on Netflix, you know, as we've talked about, that is a uh, that is a long, long term deal, uh, potentially twenty years. They've got the uh, the ten year deal with the option, and I think obviously if they if they picked up the option, they would be paying more. I'm actually not certain about that, but the point is to have signed a deal that long tells me that the people in charge of TKO and the people in charge of of WWE, their belief is probably not that the bubble is going to burst because I don't think the bubble is going to burst. But I do think that, you know, these rights cannot go up forever. And I think they probably think that, you know, this was an emerging technology, this whole streaming deal. Everybody wanted to get in. Everybody wanted to sign. Everybody was paying big money. And now it's kind of like a thing. And, you know, the the straight-up escalation is going to end. So we may as well jump in now while we can for a very, very good price. So we'll see what happens. But that's very interesting. And when we come back... What the hell's going on with TNA? Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper BB is not here. Filthy Tom Lawler is. And we got to talk about Scott Demore. What's going on here, Tom? What happened to Scott Demore? Scott Demore is no more. He is at no more. TNA, apparently, according to Anthem Sports and Entertainment, he has been replaced with who I believe is the president of Anthem Sports and Entertainment, Anthony Sissione. The promotion's parent company revealed he had been terminated. Anthony Sissione has been named the new president. They announced today that he was the new president. Moves The move aims to further integrate TNA Wrestling into Anthem's entertainment group of which Sissione is the president, leveraging the entire company's resources to add more value in areas including production, distribution, marketing, viewership. What does this have to do with Scott Demore? His contract has been terminated. He had been a part of TNA since 2003. 
held many key leadership positions, played a vital role in the growth of the company, leading to its strong industry reputation today, including the successful return of the TNA wrestling brand in 2024. This is what they wrote. Anthem thanks him for the commitment he brought to the business, the talent, and the people who work outside the ring. Which, of course, begs the question, if, you, uh, if you're talking about how he helped lead to the situation you're in today, which, here's the thing with TNA. Is TNA, when you compare it to WWE, AEW, New Japan, is it a rousing success right now at making money hand over fist? Of course not. If you look at TNA as compared to it was, where it was five years ago, four years ago is it in a much better place yeah and you know shows of late i mean we're talking you know there have been a few shows that have been you know close to what aw dynamite and collision have been doing i believe you know, they sold out the palms they've they've increased 1500 people interest in the promotion they have increased you know they've sold more tickets why did you get rid of scott demore now you just did a rebrand which, you know, everybody is, for whatever reason, I guess because people love, uh, you know, nostalgia. I mean, they like it. So, cool. Uh, whatever. I mean, you know, I don't have nostalgia for the old TNA. It sucked, for the most part. But uh, people like nostalgia, and so it's back, and people are into it. Why do you get rid of him now? BW Insider reporting belief. The decision came from Anthem President and CEO Leonard Asper. Fightful said that talent was informed. They were on a Zoom call to discuss it earlier today. He uh, had left for a while. His second stint began in 2017 when Jeff Jarrett brought him back. December 2017, DeMore and Callis were named Executive Vice Presidents. DeMore later named President of Impact in March of 2023. Sision will now run the day-to-day -day operations of TNA Wrestling. No wrestling experience, although he has been with Anthem for 16 years, and uh, and etc. So Scott Demore has he has a lot of money. He's uh, he's independently wealthy, and he had been doing this job, you know, basically because he loved doing it for a long time, and he had a lot of people that were friends with him. He had a lot of people that thought he did a great job. And there are a lot of people in in, TN, in uh, TNA today that are caught completely off guard, not happy about it, don't understand it, and nobody has come up with any sort of explanation as to why he was removed. So, I mean, we'll talk to Lance later on today. He'll be on the show this afternoon to Pacific 5 Eastern. He's currently working for TNA. My guess is he doesn't know anything either, but we can ask him. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Rossi Ogawa out. Scott Demore out. Vince McMahon out. Where was that prediction? So there you go. This person says he could be all elite. He could end up all elite, but he didn't leave. They fired him. So, I don't know. Shannon Knapp better be watching out too and victor fc one of the other assets of yeah who Sports else from a major office is going to be ousted hopefully not old tanahashi he just got that job anthem sports and entertainment really doesn't have that many assets which it looks like they could try to leverage to use with tna i mean i don't by reading that release it sounds like they would try to integrate it with some other properties but i mean i looked it up and i didn't see very many other properties hd net movies access tv and victa and got a lot of questions here brennan wants to know do you see him landing anywhere else i don't know it's it's completely up to him but you know you gotta i i, I don't know I, you'd have to ask him but you know he was he was in a very powerful position he got to make a lot of decisions and if he goes to wwe he's not going to be in that position if he goes to AEW, he's not going to be in that position. He doesn't need to work anywhere. So I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I mean, he's he's come and gone from TNA before. I wouldn't uh, say it's impossible he could ever, he would never come back. But but I don't know. These glasses are bad. Just a minute, I have to change glasses. Let's all change something. <laughs> I need to change so many things. 
These are new ones too, but I can't see with them. Okay, here we go. Change the, the red, part. the red hat pin. You had to get a strike. It was a bowling tournament. You gave away a picnic table of all the prices. A picnic table. <laughs> this is terrible today. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Corn buckle. Huh? What was it, <laughs> Brian? I, what? What was that? <laughs> Come on, Brian. What's going on? Keep, keep going. On a lonely, lonesome highway. Look, that's all I have for today. Okay, well. Are you sure? Excellent <laughs> job, Granny. <laughs> Shut up, Brian. <laughs> I had a note down here for some stuff I was going to answer. Hello? <laughs> yes, he's all right over there. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.